Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and today I wanted to do a special video uh, to thank Prepper Potpourri for sending so many of your great followers over to my channel. Uh, I've really appreciated uh, a lot of the comments and the uh, the tips that people have popped up there. Um, Prepper Potpourri has a, apparently has a great uh, community of followers, and I appreciate being able to interact with uh, a lot of you guys. So thank you for all the comments you've sent so far. I keep sending them, uh, and um, I hope that this video doesn't, uh, you know, turn you all off and make you all unsubscribe. Uh, what I want to do today is something that I don't think it's addressed that much. Specific is a tie-in to preparedness and, and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I was going to do pizza tonight, and I'm going to make my own bread, uh, which I always do. Um, but uh, I'm going to do it a little bit differently than a lot of people do. I'm going to grind my own flour right here and uh, then mix everything together in a way that is different than maybe you've seen before or been told. If you're not into cooking or baking or anything, uh, one of the things that might be turning you off is just you know the regimentation of the whole thing. And I think this video will uh, give you a sense that it doesn't always have to be so regimented. So uh, what we're going to start with is uh, I've got my, my wheat berries in these giant tubs. These are tubs that I get. Um, they're supposed to be for pet food, um, but it's, it's number two FDA approved for food, plastic, and everything. And the FDA would never steer us wrong, you know what I'm saying? Um, so this one, I, I don't mind putting dry stuff in plastic. Yeah, I feel okay with that. You know, when it's wet, I like you know, it to be in glass, but I figure th th there is, there is um, permissibility through the plastic of gases and whatnot, but uh, that's just my sense, is that if I'm putting dry stuff in plastic, it doesn't bother me that much. So these are wheat berries. Uh, uh, great thing about getting wheat berries instead of just straight flour and then grinding it into flour is that the wheat berries are going to last longer. Uh, once they get crushed down into flour, they've got a shorter shelf life. This is a little bit cheaper, too, um, and it's just kind of cool. So uh, I'm taking some wheat berries. I don't need that much. And I put it into my, my grinder here. And I've got two grinders. You might notice whew, one, two. One, this one I use for grains, and this one I use to make peanut butter, pretty much. Any kind of nut butter, but it's always just peanut butter. So uh, I've got two of them uh, just because I, I don't have to keep going back and cleaning, cleaning one or the other. Uh, these are great. Uh, this is called the Wonder Mill Junior. Uh, these are great little grinders, and let's get the tension proper. Oh, it's already starting to come out. So you just turn the handle, and you can see flour is starting to come out on the bottom there already and you can see on the top the feeder just had to go in there and you can set it for uh, different tension settings uh, depending on how uh, fine you want your flour to be some people will do two passes with it um, I usually just do one pass because I'm lazy um, but uh, it's not bad these work really well for wheat berries which is what I'm doing now like I said um, not so well for larger things. Um, a lot of times what I find myself having to do if I'm to grind chickpeas, or really anything bigger than, than wheat berries, is that I'll, I'll have a little stick and I'll have to keep poking the top to get it to go in. So this particular thing is not particularly great for, um, for anything really large. Uh, I mentioned I have this other one for um, uh, doing peanuts. Even peanuts are too, too large for this. I'm having to poke them down the whole time. Not ideal for peanuts. They advertise it as being for nut butter, but if peanuts are too big, I mean, what other kind of nuts are smaller than peanuts? You could comment and post on that. I'm sure there is something, but offhand, peanuts are kind of like the smallest nut you can think of. So it works all right, though. And it's fresh peanut butter, and the boy likes uh, having some of that. It's almost all through there. So I'm going to finish this up, and then we're going to go and, uh, and mix all the ingredients together in a very unconventional way that is probably going to shock and horrify you. Okay, so I got my flour back from the grinder, um, about that much. Um, what I oftentimes will do is just mix a little bit of white flour in also. It's kind of cheating, you know. So I'm, I'm going to put about that much of the wheat flour in. And this is some white flour I'm going to add to it. And wait, where's my measuring cups? I'm not using measuring cups. That is the biggest Thing. Everyone says that baking is it's, it's, it's art and it's science and you got to be very precise. You, you totally don't have to be precise at all, um, in my experience. So I've got about that much flour in there, made a little mountain, and I'm going to add a little bit of salt. 
Where's my measuring spoon? Okay, so do about that for salt. You have to experiment on your own. See what, what works for you. You can start with a recipe, but then don't get hung up by it. There's some olive oil. Bang, done. Alright. Now the thing you do have to be really careful about, everyone says, is the yeast because you need the precise amount of yeast to make the bread leaven and everything. You, you screw that up and the whole thing's off. So we're going to be very precise with how much yeast we put in. Okay. Whoa! Okay. Yeah, there you go. Uh, this is a little old, so I put in a little extra because, you know, a lot of you in there are probably dead. So that's the extent of my measure. I'm going to throw this back in the fridge. Yeah, keep your yeast in the fridge. That's a good thing. So there we go. It's all together there. And we've got a measuring, no, not a measuring spoon. I don't use those. A stirring spoon. There we go. Stirring spoon. Let's kind of put it all together. Sometimes what I'll do is add some extra things in here. And they, you can like gather, you know, wild seeds or all that kind of stuff. Sourdough seeds are a good thing to throw in here. But for today, I'm just going to do that. And we add some water to this right now. Right. And I'm just going to mix this together until it feels like just about the right consistency, and that's just about it. You don't want it to be a soup, uh, but you also don't want it to be too, too dry because, uh, you know, then the yeast, the yeast can't work. Don't you hate it when people say stuff like that, too dry? What does that even mean, too dry? You have to have experience. So if you don't have experience and you want to know too dry, uh, too dry is probably when it stops being sticky. You want it to be sticky out on the surface when you first do it. So you want it to be wet enough so that it's sticky, but not a soup. If that, if that is more helpful. So I'm going to mix this up and then I'm going to let it rise for a little bit um, in a warm place, kind of lit it, and, uh, and then once it rises you kind of pull it out, knead it a little bit, then throw it back and do a second rise. I always used to think it was kind of stupid to punch it down, they say, because it's like you're getting rid of all the bubbles that are made there, but I find that the bread is much more springy if you do that. It's, it's not crazy. It actually makes sense to do that. So let it rise, punch it down, knead it a little bit, put it back in, let it fluff up, and then you've got your own food. You made yourself. You didn't have to worry about the grocery store being open or anybody else making it for you, and you're that much more self-sufficient, and you didn't even need measuring cups.